Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Joost Appelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you don't want to miss out on the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. With so many beautiful pens on the market, it comes as no surprise that writers and collectors like to fill their pens with matching inks, since there are quite a few inks out there. Ink reviews come in really handy. In your search for the perfect ink, you've probably come across the Macchiato Man block, when Jägen Kiaili reviews and compares inks. Since he not only collects inks but also found the pens, we've asked him to tell us about his three favorites. He decided to get a bit creative with the assignment and instead show us his favorite pens from three different categories. We hope you enjoy this video and make sure to check out Jägen's blog or his Instagram account when you're done. G'day, my name is Jägen. I'm behind the Macchiato Man blog where I discuss fountain pens, inks and related stationaries. I'm also the co-founder of Fountain Pens Australia, which is the largest group in Australia for fountain pens. Juiced asked me to make this video for Applebaum's top three pens series on YouTube. Um, I'm going to do things a little differently as instead of doing my top three favorite pens, I'm going to give these pens into three different categories. The first pen is going to be uh, my actual favorite pen or my top pen. The next one is going to be my favorite looking pen. And the last one will be the pen that I'm most likely to recommend to new people new to fountain pens. So the first pen we're going to look at is the Sailor Pro Gear full size. This is my favorite pen. This is the pen that most defines my collection. And the reason that I like it, like it as much as I do is uh, threefold. I find the nibs on Sailor pens to be extremely consistent, um, whether that's nib feel, nib um, size. When I buy a pen, I know what I'm going to get, whether it's a fine, extra fine, medium fine, medium or broad. Um, there is obviously some ever so slight differences between the nibs, but generally you, I know what I'm going to get. They have some really beautiful texture to them. They feel like a pencil when you're writing, writing with them. Um, so you can, you can feel the paper. Um, but these aren't scratchy pens. They're still relatively smooth even though there's texture to the writing. They're decently wet pens. They're easy to clean, um, especially when you've got Sailor inks in, in the pen as well. I really like the nib feel and there's consistency with the nibs. Um, I've got 16 Sailor Pro Greers, including a Riella. I've also got a standard 21, which is a 19, a small 1911 with a 21 karat nib. All of them have really nice nibs and I really enjoy writing with them. Um, I've got two friends who also collect pens together, so we probably have 70 or so pens, Sailor, Pro, Sailor pens, mostly Pro Gears. And I can't say I know of a single pen that's been bad. So the second reason I uh, enjoy these pens is their size. They're a smaller pen but they're not too thin. Um, they work really nicely in my hands. I don't like thin sections, I don't like thin pe thin pens. These are just the right thickness for me to comfortably hold. They're also fairly light pens as well. So they're just the right length, size and shape for me. I also generally prefer the cartridge converter pens compared to the Riello because personally I like um, just having a small amount of ink in a pen. I also prefer the full size much more to the, to the Slim because the Slim's just a little bit too thin for me. The last reason the Sailor Pro Gear is my choice of my top pen is because it's a very collectible pen and I do have a collection. I, do, I am a collector of fountain pens. I'm also a user but I also like to collect and Sailor Pro Gears are very collectible. There's all these different colors. There's Japanese exclusives, there's American, there's other parts of Asia, there's Europe, and these are released you know, th throughout the year. There are a lot, you have to pick and, pick and choose. You certainly, I certainly can't afford to buy all of them, 
but it's fun to collect them. It's fun to chase them down. It's fun to, fun to find where they're available, how to buy them. And they can be difficult to buy sometimes, but that's just part of the fun of collecting for me. So those are the three reasons the Sailor Pro Gear full size is my top pen. It's got consistent right nibs that are with a really nice writing feel for me, the right size and shape pen for me, and weight. And finally, I find them very collectible pens, which I really enjoy. And naturally, I also collect the inks as well, and I match them up together a lot. As an honourable mention, I'm just going to go with the Lamy 2000. I've got two of these, a medium and a fine, and they're both beautiful nibs, really comfortable to write with. And again, they're a very similar shape, size, and weight to the Sailor Pro Gear. I like the tapered section as well. I know some people find it slippery. I don't. I find it's got enough texture in it for me, and it's just got a really um, beautiful, minimal Bauhaus design style. It's just a classic fountain pen. Um, I really like it, and it's just comfortable, and it's a pen I always reach for. The second category of pens I'm going to talk about is the pen I find to be the most beautiful. Now, I do enjoy um, the colors and, and, and the design of the Sailor Pro Gears, but for me, the most beautiful pen in my collection is the Omas Spina de Pesca. And obviously, Omas is, is, is no longer with us, and this is practically a discontinued pen. It's, very, it's somewhat difficult to acquire now. I actually traded up to it um, from a, an Omas Paragon with brown Arco celluloid. Um, so a similar colored and it's pen with the same material um, with a silver trim. That pen was a little bit too heavy and big for my taste and my writing and how I like to write. Um, it did have a nib that I prefer, but this pen is again a similar size, weight and shape to Pro Gears and Lamy 2000. So I really enjoy um, how it feels in my hand, even if the oblique double broad nib in it is not necessarily my first choice. The Spina de Pesca has a beautiful Omas brown Arco celluloid, the stack celluloid. I love stack celluloid. I've got I've got some stack celluloid, um, a park, old Parker vacuumatic, and I've got them in some Visconti Wall Streets, and it, I just I love that style of material, and it's so unique in the Arco brown from Omas. But what makes the Spina de Pesca, and especially my version of it, somewhat unique as well, is on the cap, it's got the normal side-sliced brown Arco celluloid, but on the barrel, it's got it cut at an angle, which gives this Spina de Pesca or fishbone look to the pen. So it's got two different cuts on the pen. They do somewhat match up, and it's just a really beautiful pen to look at. It's got lots of brightness to it, especially in the yellow, some gold mixed with brown. It reminds me a lot of Tiger Eye big fan of how this pen looks. On the side, um, it doesn't have much going on, but on the back and the front, it's just really beautiful and I love it, especially in, in bright lights and the sun. The honorable mention in this category is going to be the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. It's a really beautiful color with lots of depth to it, lots of beautiful turquoises, blues and blacks to it. I love the silver trim that matches it. I don't think it worked anywhere near as well with a gold trim. The side of it isn't quite as, like, like the Arco Brown celluloid, that when you rotate the pen to the side, it's not, there isn't quite as much going on. But on the front, back, and, and most, of the, the, most of the pen, it's really beautiful. I know there was some controversy around the pen and, pen and its marketing images when it came out, but I would be really happy with the pens that I've seen in person as well that other people have had. I love this color, this design, and the shape. It's really nice to write with. It's on the heavier end of pens for me to write with, but I still find it really comfortable. And but that design, especially when you put it in bright lights and 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 the sun, all the sun, it just shines and shimmers. It's really beautiful ink. I love to pair it with J. Hoban, Emerald of Cheval. It's just the, the combination of that. The ink color is fairly similar. But you also get some shimmer and some got some red sheen. I think it's just a really beautiful combination with the M805 um, Ocean Swirl. And that's my runner up. The final category I want to talk about is pens that I would most likely recommend to someone new to fountain pens. And this is somewhat somewhat a little bit diff difficult to answer because, well, there's one important factor, and that's who you're trying to give the pen to and you've got to cater to the, their needs. In general, 
The pen that I've selected for this is the Twisby Eco. It really exemplifies fountain pens really well and in an affordable manner. It's a demonstrator, so you see the ink sloshing around. It really shows that this is a fountain pen and not a ballpoint or a roll ball. This is something different. And it's, and it's interesting to see, and especially when you're new to fountain pens, it's something different. You can put a pink ink or an orange or yellow or, or a light green, and you can really see the colors sloshing around in there as well. It's beautiful to see. The pen is affordable. Twisby have great service for it. And uh, the nibs are really nice. It's got a comfortable section to it uh, and a very general writing experience section to it. Um, but the problem with this pen for some people is that it is not very, it, it requires a, an ink bottle. You have to fill, the bottle, fill this up with an ink bottle and that can be a little bit daunting to some people. They're worried about spilling all over the place and that's a, that's a real concern. And so for the, my runner up, it's a little bit more, a little bit obvious is the Lamy Safari. The reason why I picked this over some other, some other budget entry, budget or entry level pens is because it's available almost anywhere. It's very easy to get cartridges for it. There are lots of different colors as well. Um, it, can, it can be somewhat collectible or someone can just pick a color that works for them. Um, you can, so yeah, you can pip find it anyway. There's lots of different nibs for it. You can, it. It's easy to exchange and interchangeable, have interchangeable nibs, nibs so you can almost have multiple pens in one pen. Finally, the one issue I have with the Lamy Safari is its section. It can be somewhat limiting depending on how some people hold their pen. For a traditional tripod um, grip, it works really well. But others, it might not work quite as well. But it's still a great pen. I would just always prefer to pick the Twisby Eco if the person is happy to have a bottled ink pen. So that's the video. Thanks Juice for inviting me to do this. It's been lots of fun.